Bladesmiths, welcome to the forge. I'm sure that each of you has practiced forging a blade in three hours, and you can knock that out pretty easily, but the judges and I, however, feel like it's too easy. On the anvils in front of you, you'll see two blocks of one inch square by five inch W1 steel. In this first round of competition, you will have to forge not one, but two push knives in four hours. Good luck, Bladesmiths. Your 10 minute design period starts now. I think I'm gonna build a clip point dagger with a false edge on the top. There's a little more meat in the blade, and so it's something that will perform well in the challenges. A motto I got from my grandfather was there's two ways for a bladesmith to go to hell, and that is to hammer cold steel and not charge enough for your work. For the blade, I'm going with a long, sloping drop point fighter design. The toughest part of this is definitely going to be making a tang in a totally different fashion than I've ever had to do before. I'm going to isolate the steel, and then I'm going to use fullers to spread my width out. I feel like I have a good chance of being the champion because I'm awesome and handsome. I'm going to be doing push knives for the first time today. I know that the handle transition is going to have to be beefy, something that uh, can be used to puncture a sheet of steel. Your design window is now closed. Your four-hour forging time starts now. Right now, I'm going to spend as much time shaping the steel with my hammer as I can. I want my forging skills to yield as much of the final shape as possible. Right now, I haven't done anything towards actually giving the blade a bevel. If you don't have a bevel, it's not going to cut. Looking pretty good so far. My strategy is to work on one blade at a time. It's a new process that I've never done before. If I work on one and work out my problems in the first one, the second one could go better. My first blade drew out beautifully. I'm feeling good about the process and the steps, so I go over to the power hammer, and it's a bigger power hammer than I'm used to. That was a mistake. I got a problem. I thin out one spot in the blade up by the handle, and it's too thin to work with. This is starting to indicate a problem. Yeah. Make it thinner, thinner, thinner. You better start making Damascus. What to do, what to do. I've been accused of being overly competitive. If somebody else wins, I'm going to make them win it from me. I'm not going to roll over for them. Hey, let's put the life in these blades. Oh, you heat treat the first blade, and it comes out perfect. It hardened, it skated the file, and it didn't warp. Yes, I love it when a plan comes together. I'm feeling great. I grabbed the second blade, I put it in, I heat treat it just like I did the first one, straight as an arrow. I mean, I'm high stepping to the grinder now. I mean, I've, I have made it. I'm a little worried about the heat treat because I'm going with an unfamiliar steel, unfamiliar forge that's running hot. And I'm most worried about the hardness of the tips. It's way hotter than it needs to be. I don't want to quench too hot. It might cause it to break. So I uh, use the cutting torch. I carefully take my time, heat it up evenly, and quench it. James just quenched. Wow. Fireball right in the face. I go to quench my second blade. I get a warp. This is bad. James has a warp that he is just fighting right now. I have to straighten that out. Try it again. I got another warp. I almost never have warps. If I can't get my warp straightened all the way, it could bite me. Five, four, three, two, one. Blade Smith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. Your forging time is over. Woo! Bladesmiths, this is the strength and durability test. I'll be taking your blades and hammering them into these steel plates to test the retention of your tip. Rochelle, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. Now for number two. Yeah. Let's take a closer look. No damage. 
Still sharp right there. Let's look at the other one. We got a little bit of a problem. The tip broke off. I'm looking at this damage right here at the tip. You overheated it. And that's what I'm seeing here. It looks kind of like sugar. That's something that I don't like to see. However, they are sharp, and they can go on to the second round for testing. James, you're up. Let's do it. Yeah, it's still sharp. There's just a little tip deformation. Let's look at the other one. The point has lost its sharpness, but it's not damaged. Your edge, however, in our sharpness test, I'm curious as to see how that's going to work, because you have a really thick edge. Yes, I'm curious, too. Paul, you ready for this? Let's do it. This is the one I was worried about. Me too. Well, let's take them apart and see how they held up. We have a little bit of edge deformation, but there's no point damage. So I'm impressed with that, because I thought there would be. Good job. I've come to conclude there is a blade god. I really want to just do a jig. <laughs> blade Smiths, this is a sharpness test. To see how sharp your blades are, I will take each of your weapons and I'll deliver a puncture and a slash on these denim bags. Rochelle, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. OK, Rochelle, you have it designed to where it would be fit perfectly in the middle. I like to use index for more control of your blade here. But in terms of function, it's easy to index where the tip is. And of course, in slashing, as you can see, it will cut. Thank you. Good job. All right, James, you're up next. You ready? A little nervous, but let's do it. Let's do this. Well, James, your blade handle definitely is set up to where you can comfortably put it in the middle of the fist here. The top, the right hand, this one, pretty good one, easy to slash through. This one, on the other hand, seems to have bounced off in this area, and the tip caught and cut it all the way out there. These are double reinforced denim bags. So any slight lacerations, you have to have a sharp edge to go all the way through that. One blade will definitely cut. The other one, not all the way through. I suddenly become a lot more worried about my chances. But it does feel good in the hand to move it around, though. Paul, you're up next. You ready? Let's get it on. OK, Paul, your blades over here, especially one being longer in, than the other one, didn't affect at all with the cuts over here. It feels good. Now, little blade that could. <laughs> he had a little snag on the cut. It wasn't a complete cut all the way through, but it was sharp enough to lacerate all. Overall, your blades will cut. Good Thank job. You. Thank you. Bladesmiths, these deliberations are never easy, but the judges have made a final decision, and it's time for one of you to lead the forge. Rochelle, your blades did not make the cut. Well, Rochelle, the tip of your blade broke off in our testing. The grain structure was large, and that comes from overheating. A bad heat treat in a blade will cause catastrophic failures in the future. So it's only going to continue to break off, and that's why we're sending you home. Rochelle, please surrender your weapons. I agree with the judge's decision. You got to be able to keep the knife from breaking in use. I may not be the forged and fire champion, but I am a winner in that I got up and fought for it. You got to try. 